Uh, so there's a couple of motions that will be going ahead at Special Congress. So I'll go through a, a few of them quickly. We kind of touched on them a little bit on Thursday's show. But the Munster Senior Hurling runners-up facing the third-place Leinster Senior Hurling Championship in an All-Ireland quarter-final and vice versa. That's one that's being looked at. Again, I, look, the reason I don't like this, and I'd, I'd rather just cut out half the league, make up more time so that more... No, no, no. Hold on. Sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. You're talk this is championship now, this motion. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just saying motions should be put in to cut the league in half first off so that rather than like so this will downsize the championship doing that because you want a preliminary quarterfinals but i'd rather rather than getting rid of more rounds i'd be looking for ways that play the monster and leinster then put the two league tables together and then let everyone start playing everybody whereas this is going to ensure that if you don't get out of monster or if you don't get out of leinster you could go like five six years without seeing the likes of tipperary ever playing kilkenny we've already gone 2020, 21, 22, and 23 without seeing Tipperary against Kilkenny in the championship. That is a joke. We should be seeing that every single year. We should be seeing Cork versus Kilkenny or Wexford or whatever every single year. It's such a missed opportunity that these teams don't play each other. And we haven't played in the league in matches that don't matter, according to absolutely everyone, including the managers who always talk about league as league. This is such a waste. Why are we just, why do we have all of these assets and we refuse to use them? Is there a solution um, to what you're saying there without getting rid of the provinces? Yes. Play the provinces, then put the two tables together so that all the teams from Leinster then play all the teams from Munster. And in total, you'll have 10 games each. So if you get cut the league in half, it's grand. It'll still fit into the same time frame. Is the league even, in that instance, would the league even be worth playing? Oh, I'd happily get rid of it in the morning. Yeah, it's been really poor the last couple of years. And like me and you would get excited about any sort of games of hurling, but like you just you you're not you're not even sure what you're looking at. Do you know what I mean? You don't it's very hard to assess what you're looking at and you can end up reading too much into X, Y, or Z or whatever. So um yeah, I definitely would be looking at shortening the league or or if they're gonna keep it, which it looks like they are. I don't know. There has to be. There has to be more on the line. There has to be more at stake. I know what you're saying, but like what you're saying is not going to happen in the first in the foreseeable, or definitely not for the next couple of years. I wouldn't think so anyway. But um, I just think we should be moving towards it. Like we should be doing, making little changes now because they only ever happen by degrees. Make changes that are going to facilitate that happening. What they're doing there is actually copper fastening that it's not moving in that direction. Yeah, um, we have a kind of tendency to do that though. Like I don't know. I don't know when I don't know when we're going to see like really kind of seismic change. Saying that, uh, seismic change as regards the championship. Obviously, the round robin came in in eighteen, and it's been a roaring success. But I do think they need to have a look at. I, I don't know if if the league is going to be there. there ha it has to be, it has to be more incentives for teams. There has to be something there for them to really go for. Whether that's financial incentives, whether that's uh, some sort of championship incentive, whether that's a backdoor option or something like that, or some way that you're incentivizes it to really go hard for the league because there's nothing there at the moment. Yeah, I mean, but like, do you agree the point? Like, we haven't seen Kilkenny against Tipperary for the last four years. That's ridiculous. What other sport in the world would have two of their top teams not playing each other for years? Yeah, it's mad. <laughs> it's mad. What was the longest, what was the longest gap Kilkenny went without playing Tipperary in Championship? Probably 20 years at different stages. Is yeah, that yeah, it's, but, and it, people would say people would harp back and say, "Ah, but you didn't play for twenty years back then." But I just think things have moved on an awful and lot and more that's now. Not a good do you know thing. what I mean? Like, yeah, people say it all it's happened before. Yeah, and it was stupid. And let's not do it again. <laughs> it's stupid. Change it now. Uh, okay, there's another um, thing here that the Galway minor hurlers be permanently considered participants in the Leinster Championship. See no reason why that wouldn't be the case. You, as someone in Leinster County, that. You know, struggled for a number of years. You're obviously doing well now. How do you feel about that? Um, no, I don't. I don't have any great issue with it. But like, would would Offaly have gotten to the the All Ireland minor hurling final in 2022 if Galway had been in Leinster? Maybe, maybe not. But it does force it to it does force it to really up your standards. Like Galway were in the under 20 this year, and we beat them. They didn't even get to a semi final, let alone a final. So. But with, I, uh, with all of this, like because about ye lifting your own standards rather than it doesn't matter what Galway did. Once you reached your standards, you're then getting back to finals and winning finals and stuff. It's nothing to do with Galway. Oh no, true enough. Yeah, but I, I don't have any issue with I don't have any great issue with Galway being in Leinster because I tell you why I don't have an issue because I think it's better for her in long term to have 
Galway not coming in playing an All Ireland quarter final or some round robin stages, and it's just mad kind of what's going on there. They're getting so little games. Look at the amount of games Galway Miners played last year with that kind of change in format. They played a heap of games, probably more last year, more in twenty twenty three. The Miners played than any of the previous three teams have played. So I just say I, I think from a hurling point of view overall, and I think. You can't, I think you can't be selfish in that regard. You have to look outside of Offaly or Kilkenny or wherever. Yeah, we mightn't win as many Leinster titles or whatever, but I think Hurlem would be better for it. Um, actually, I, I'm just thinking there about the Tip Kilkenny rivalry. I think it was 1971 to 1991 um, that, that I think that famine lasted. Um, there's a couple of different things going on here. Richard Hogan says, a, riding boat, a rising boat lifts all tides. A rising tide lifts all boats? I, I think it's the opposite way around, I'd say, yeah. But still, the sentiment comes through. Mossy Lyons says, totally agree, championship should be extended. Uh, came out of home, Cork v. Tip Championship this year, said, what a game, what a night, but won't have another full Porky Queef game until uh, for another 12 months. All right, so some of the other um, motions going forward, the provincial councils may be permitted to organise their under-20 championships as they see fit, i.e. does not need to be knockout. Yeah, again... I mean that should be fine. Um, uh, what do you think of that? Then there could be a great, there could be a massive disparity between. I know. Well, they're kind of there was this year. No, they were both the same, weren't they? There were groups this year in Munster, and there were two separate groups in Leinster as well. They all got a heap of games, but you could have uh, two provincial councils playing completely different championship setups within the one championship. If you get me. Yeah, I mean, there, it should be, I suppose, coordinated nationally really to make sure that the best things happen for everyone i would have thought so yeah because you could have for instance if leinster wanted to do it leinster could play a knockout under 20 where everyone where teams some teams only get one game uh, in munster they could play the kind of round robin thing like they did this year where every team got at least three or four games so i don't know i'd probably prefer it to be uniform but maybe there's you don't know what does be going on at provincial council level maybe there's something uh there's something to that or there's more of a point to it yeah, maybe actually this is a perfect situation or a perfect age grade where you get rid of provinces. Just have two groups of whatever or three groups of whatever. That'll be that'll be the start of it then. Again, when that when that happens, when that happens, I think you're oh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't even hazard a guess of when when you're looking at something like that to happen, to be honest with you. And plus the the, the GA have um a big sponsor in Allianz pumping money into the league. Now, if I was Allianz... But you could always I, transfer their sponsorship to the league stages of Munster and Leinster. You could. Um, would Centra, Very, etc. be as happy if uh, if they're, you know, they're sponsoring the whole championship whereas they're only getting a segment of it? Um, but if I was Allianz, I would not be happy with, with the bang I'm getting for my book at the minute. With, well, a look, with, with a competition that's not taken seriously by a hell of a lot of counties. So you could have, let's say, Allianz in this situation, they sponsor the provincial leagues, so the, so which is basically the Munster champ, so the provincial championships, and then they're on every other sponsor, they sponsor the All Ireland series. So and actually, all games are worth something all the time. I think it'd be far better. And then you've even got like brief little knockout stages at the end, uh, which I've talked about before. But anyway, another motion is that All Ireland senior football and hurling finals be played on or before the last Sunday in July, barring exceptional circumstances when the CCC uh, or when Central Council can make other arrangements. Would you be happy enough with that? Um, I probably would have. Um, I probably would have let it go back a week or two. Been honest with you. Um, that would um, be going back a week or two. I think the All Ireland was July. Um, oh, sorry, it was the middle. Yeah. Um. Yeah. If 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 it buys if it buys another week and yeah, no, I just think we need another week or two in the in the championship just to to. I know people will go mad, but to let it breed a small bit, I just think it's way too condensed for the squads involved. Um, and I do think it's too condensed from a promotional point of view as well. We we, we fell from the All Ireland football semi finals into the week of the All Ireland hurling final this year. And everything just goes by in a whirlwind. And I don't think you get to build up the games enough, being, being honest with you. Um, and it do, I don't think it affects clubs. It it just it will affect the clubs involved by a week or two. That's it. Only those clubs, not the majority, not, you know, no more. All, you know, 30 counties will be able to proceed as normal. So I don't think it affects the club game at all. Yeah. And another motion is that a county may be empowered to increase their eligibility rules to prevent a player who celebrates his 70th birthday prior to January 1st of the championship year from playing in the competition. So that will be coming from Central Council as well. Like the, the frustrating part is there are 17-year-olds 
who are well equipped physically to be able to play senior level and who probably aren't playing multiple competitions. The trouble is you can't trust individual managers and individual clubs to all do the right thing for players all the time. They might have played a couple of games, but look, we really need him, lads. We'll have to play him this weekend. Sure, look, he'll be grand. And some lads end up getting flogged. Oh, it's, it's a shame. Like, and, and I'd say this with the junior junior team in Kula at the moment. There's like five or six lads who all of a sudden can't play who are really good and playing against um, you know, full adult teams like the second team from Plunkett's, the first team from, from different uh, clubs as well. And you're like, you don't have them now for the rest of the year. It's a shame for them they don't get to play against adults. Shame for me I don't have lads to do the running for me. Um, <laughs> but I do understand that you can't always trust every club to do the right thing and every management team, I should say, within that. It's short-sightedness usually by um, a certain cohort that basically affects why, why you know, like I remember, like I remember in Burr, I remember lads that were under 16, but on the Burr senior panel and been very, very close to playing senior championship or been really influential players on the intermediate team. Do you know what I mean? Um, and they were just, they were ready. They were ready to go at the time uh, and they weren't being flogged rat and they weren't, they were balancing it fairly well between all their teams, but it's that, short-sightedness of a manager saying yeah i know he played a game last night but we need him tonight and then he's a hip problem or whatever and then he's not playing at all um so yeah i it, it really kills rural clubs where they need a 15 year old or they need a six 15 maybe is a bit much so they need a 16 year old that's you know a standout minor or something like that that they're the ones that probably really get hurt the ones in the town not not so much yeah um